Hey everyone, uh, so we're going to go ahead and get started on this afternoon's webinar on market sizing. Uh, for those of you that don't know me, my name is Brian Sayre. I'm a senior associate with Shadow Ventures. Uh, so first we're going to run through a few PowerPoint slides and a little bit of a presentation, uh, and then we'll open up the discussion for a Q&A session. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. All right, so why are we talking about market sizing today? Uh, first point, the number of pitch decks we get at Shadow Ventures that claim that their market size is a trillion dollars is just too damn high. It's not accurate. It's not the way to do it. Uh, so what we're going to run through today is kind of the process that Shadow Ventures does when we're conducting diligence on any deal. Uh, why does that matter? Because if you don't do it for us, we're going to do it for you. Um, and when we do that, we're going to make assumptions. So therefore, it's really valuable that you do the work. Don't make the investors assume anything. So let's look at kind of the classic example that we see in a bunch of our pitch decks. Um, this is a trillion dollar industry. I'm going to capture 10% of that. Therefore, my company market size is a trillion dollars times 0.1, and it's a $100 billion opportunity. That is the easy way and it's not the right way to actually demonstrate that you understand what your market is, how much of it you're going to be able to capture, and how you're going to be able to grow in the future. That 10% of that trillion dollars is a percentage of the total market, not your actual market size. So let's look at how Brian dis defines market sizing. Um, the first piece of that is the market. So who is your customer and what are you actually selling them? The size is how big is your market? And within that, you have three different kind of uh, sub definitions that you could use. There's addressable. So what percentage of that market is a potential customer? There's the available. What percentage of that market fits you? And then finally, there's obtainable. So what percentage of that market can you actually go out and get? So some key points before we run into our process. Um, the first is customize this for you. There's no cookie cutter way to do this. Uh, you're going to have to customize it for your industry and for your company. Uh, Shadow Ventures invests in the built world. So for the sake of this example, we're going to be running through that. But if you're a healthcare company, if you're an entertainment company, um, regardless of where you are, or what you're selling, you're going to have to customize the market sizing to work for you specifically. Um, second, do the work. This isn't an easy process. Um, so really take the time to dig deep and get those questions to the answers because the more you know, the smarter you're going to look and the better you're going to be able to present. Uh, third point, show your math. We're going to check anything that you present to us. So have those numbers ready and how you came up with them available. Um, it'll just streamline the whole process. And for this is your opportunity to demonstrate expertise. Show us that you know your customer and product market fit better than we do. So let's jump into the process a little bit. So the first piece is what industry are you serving? Um, and what industry are you selling to? Most companies we see, this is a fairly obvious question. They get this right. So for this example, we're going to be looking at the built world. You know, step two, how big is that industry? Well, okay, you're going to claim that the built world is a trillion dollar space. That's great. Don't stop. You're just getting started. This is the easy part. Again, this is where 90% of the pitch decks that we see, the companies stop here and just take a percentage of that and say, this is our market size. You're not there yet. So looking at the next part, uh, what market phase or vertical are you going to sell to? So within the construction space, you can go after the design, the construction, or the operation. What vertical are you going to sell to? Are you going to sell to architects, contractors, engineers, owners, and operators? So we're going to decide that we're going to go after the construction phase and the vertical customer we're going to go after are contractors. Next, this is where you really have to start digging down into the numbers. So how are you going to sell to that industry or that phase? And how are you going to sell to that customer? Well, we're going to do it project-based. So what type of project are you going to sell? We're going to target healthcare companies. What phase of that project? Well, just new construction. 
Okay, now how many of those total are there? Two, let's use 2,000 as an example. What size project of those 2,000 are you gonna go after? We're gonna go after $50 million plus projects. Say there's 500 total. And how much are we gonna charge for each one of those projects? $1,000 per project. Now, a couple other options that we could look at, you could do a SaaS-based model where you need to be asking questions around what size firm are you gonna target? How many total firms are there? You could do a user-based model where you need to start figuring out what level position can actually purchase, what size firm matches this, and then how many total users are there that fit those definitions. Or you could get more creative with it and look at something like a percentage of total revenue. So what size firm, again, and how many of those total are there? Next, we're gonna dig into a region. So what specific area are you going to target and sell to first? So how many $50 million plus new construction healthcare projects are there in this region? Our offices are in New York, so we're gonna go after the Northeast to start. Next, we're gonna look at what percentage of that market can you actually capture? So 1%, if you're just starting out, be conservative with this. 5% um, if you have some sort of traction, 10% don't go there yet, show us some room for growth, and 100% now you're just fibbing, no, you can't. Nobody gets 100% of any of the market that they're going after. So if we're looking at 5% of the Northeast, $50 million plus healthcare new construction projects, total, we're estimating that we're gonna capture five of those. And the next step, it shows how you're gonna grow beyond to a billion dollars and beyond. So you have three different options here. One, you can look at expanding through different regionals, different regions. So you're starting in the Northeast, you can expand to the Southeast. The next is you can look at new verticals. So if you're in healthcare, you could look at entering into data centers, still focus on selling in the Northeast, but you're expanding what type of project you're selling to, or you can go to new products, services, and features so you could add something like an enterprise offering. So let's kind of look at the full picture of what we just painted there. Industry we're going after is the built world. The size of that industry is a trillion dollars. The vertical we're going after is the construction phase and contractors. We're selling project-based, targeting $50 million plus healthcare new construction projects. The region we're gonna be selling is the Northeast and the market share that we're gonna capture is 5%. And in the future growth, we're gonna look at a regional expansion. We're gonna expand to the Southeast and that increases the total number of projects to 200. So now let's jump in and do some of the math. And this is the fun stuff. So if there's five projects, $1,000 a project, your market size is around $5,000. Let's show growth, 10% of that by year three. So you're gonna now get 10 projects, market size increases to $10,000. And you wanna show even more growth than that. Well, let's show the regional expansion into the Southeast. You're gonna capture 5% of those 200 projects. So that's 10 new projects. Your Southeast market size is $10,000. Now that's pretty straightforward, there are some different definitions that you need to be aware of. So let's look at TAM versus SAM versus SOM. Um, TAM is your total addressable market. So what's the largest possible market that you could capture? Uh, so if we look at the definitions that we were using earlier, this would be healthcare, new construction projects. We said there was 2,000 of those. So your total addressable market in this case is $2 million. If we're looking at SAM, so the service available market, that's the proportion of that market that fits you. So in this case, we're adding more criteria and narrowing our focus even further. So we're looking at $50 million plus projects, healthcare and new construction. We said there was 500 of those. So your SAM is $500,000. The last is the SOM, so the service obtainable market. And that's the proportion of that market that you can reach today. So we're saying that you're gonna capture 5% of the Northeast market $50 million plus healthcare new construction projects. There's five total, so that's $5,000.
So what's the goal of all of this? Is the goal of market sizing to show us the dollar value of the market? That's a big no. The numbers here are all bullshit. <laughs> if you tell us that there's a market size that's $5 million, I'll be able to prove to you plus or minus a million dollars that it's different and I'll be able to show you the math to prove it. So why are we doing all of this? The goal when you're doing any sort of market sizing is to prove to us that you know your market, you know how big that market is today, you know how big it will be in the future, and you have a path on how you plan to get there. And some last thoughts, we will still check and verify any of the math you show us, but that's much better than us doing the math for you. So I'm gonna stop sharing and open it up for any Q&A that anybody has. And if you want, um, you can go ahead and raise your hands if I can figure out how to do that. And you can just ask the questions live rather than me trying to go through and read these. So Sean asked, uh, what percentage of the market can you capture? Can you base that instead on your project market spend in the first two to three years of your company? I'm not exactly sure what you're asking there, Sean, uh, but I'll look at your second question. So also, do you think TAM Samsung is valuable for investors if you are offering a revenue-based model and if you are not pursuing conventional VC? Um, if you're not pursuing conventional VC, um, I, I'm obviously not exactly sure what you're going after there, um, but I think the market sizing exercise is still an extremely valuable exercise for any entrepreneur to do because it's going to tell you if this is worth you even pursuing. Um, do you really want to invest the next five to 10 years of your life, maybe even more than that, trying to build this business if there's not a market that's going to eventually result in some sort of business that you think is valuable and is worth you putting that time and energy behind? Um, so I still think it's definitely worth doing that. Um, and if you're doing a revenue-based model, so I assume that's kind of based off of what I pointed out, where it's a percentage of total revenue. Um, yeah, it's still valuable to do that there. Um, it's a little bit harder to do that because it can be hard to understand um, exactly how much revenue these companies are making. Uh, but typically, if you do some digging, especially with some of the large general contractors, architects and engineering firms, you can get a pretty good estimate of what their yearly revenue is. You're welcome, Sean. Does anybody else have any questions? All right, if that's all anybody has, uh, we'll go ahead and end this. And uh, thanks for jumping on this Zoom call today. I appreciate it.